What's good? We back. Motor City Sports Talk. We in the building from talking about one guy and Miles Killebrew who's buried on a depth chart in that could possibly be on the chopping block or a position change. Let's talk about a breath of fresh air in the Detroit Lions mini caps and OTAs. T.O. Redden, Michigan native, went to Michigan Collegiate High School. Um, listed out of Warren, Michigan. He went to Bowling Green. And uh, he's a perfect example why sometimes you just don't know about players coming out of college and what was a system fit, what wasn't a system fit. And when you get them uh, in a different environment, in a different uh, team or in a different system, they may thrive. And that's why you hit, get rough, uh, diamonds in the rough in the NFL draft. Sounds like the Detroit Lions have came up on a diamond and rough in T.O. Redden. And he's just one receiver that I was heard I heard about. It's another receiver they got that's like 6'4", runs a 4'3", as well. Um, they signed him. He was from a smaller college. Stayed, a, stayed around smaller college at, at home because of, uh, I think he had family issues or whatever it may be. When I figure out uh, his name and a little bit deeper about his background, I do want him as well, too. But this is a diamond in the rough. The Lions are, you know, somehow finding receivers that potentially can legitimately probably contribute somewhere in the future. And Teal Redding is a guy that played at Bowling Green, and according to the article I read in the Detroit Free Press, which um, you can check out the Free Press, I'll link in the description, um, his old college coach that got there, he says the reason that basically T.O. Redding went under radar is because at Bowling Green, they just wanted him to run vertical routes. And all his routes were deep, so he didn't get a chance to really learn how to run the out routes or the, the post or the flag routes or the eight deep end routes, the eight route, end routes, the, the drag routes, the zig routes, you know, or, or, or whatever. He just was told to run them nine routes and get deep. So, you know, when they had a new coaching staff come in, you know, they found out that he can make some acrobatic plays in the intermediate and mid routes. And uh, when he got to the Lions and, you know, he made an athletic play at the goal line. He's 6'1", 180-some pounds, which he – I got to put some weight on. He's going to be a developmental player, but he has raw talent. He's a super athlete, 38.7 inch vertical. Sounds like he has excellent hands and he's known for making acrobatic catches. And the Lions just so happily snagged him before the Cincinnati Bengals snagged him. And those are those, that's what your scouting department is for. Now, every first, second, third, fourth round pick ain't going to hit. A lot of teams that end up being great dynasties and good solid teams in year in, year out. You know, usually used to be like the the, the, the Patriots or used to be like the, the Ravens and the, and, the, and the Steelers and stuff and teams of that nature. They do a good scouting department from five rounds, five all the way to undrafted. Your scouting department has to find guys like this because guess what? They're out there and they're cheap to begin with and they're usually humble, hardworking. And a lot of times they end up becoming – Leaders of your team. Look at Antonio Brown with the with the Steelers. And receivers are like guards in in basketball. Guards come a dime a dozen. You can find a great guard. You know, receivers. You can find a great receiver. You really can. The scouting department just got to be on point and on cue and know talent when they see talent. And that's been an issue with the Lions and the Pistons. The scouting department just sucks. But you can see Bob Quinn is starting to change that culture. And this is a local kid. You got him to come in and, and work hard, and this is going to be a good story. If Dudu can come in and work hard this season, you know, play on a practice squad probably, then work his way up and, and, and maybe get some playing time and potentially start in the future, in the near future, I mean, you know, people are going to flock to see a local guy. You know, he has superstar S traits, S potential. Some of the catches that he's making are unbelievable. You can't teach him catches. At 6'1", he can get down the field and run. Only thing that needs to be done for him is to get on a weight program. Repetition. You know, hone the route running ability. Same thing with Kenny Galladay. Hone the route running ability. And after that, you know, put some little bit of muscle on a little bit of size on him, a, a little workout regimen, a new nutrition plan. You might get you a diamond in the rough. But Tia Redding, he's a, little, he's a local product. Obviously went down, not too far down to Bowling Green. Was a bad system fit to the new regime came in. The Lions just so happened to work him out, and he was they they he, they were impressed enough to bring him on board. So you know he he he's a fringe start uh, uh roster guy from what I understand. Like if the Lions want to choose to carry five receivers, you know it might be him. If not, he'd be on a practice squad and um be and, and hopefully he don't turn out like Chris Greenwood, another local product. He can stay healthy and uh develop. But let me know what y'all think. We gone.